we have been receiving a lot of questions um, and i think uh, questions is a sign of a seeking mind so a lot of uh, students are really seeking um, a lot of questions and you know they want a lot of information so that they can participate in this competition so uh, kavi sir uh, my first question is like you also mentioned uh, some time back to uh, rushan uh, where you know one of the interns kind of shared that uh, eantra is an investment for life so uh, uh, in that sense sir uh, like you know a lot of questions regarding mooc is coming and you know like uh, about uh, why there is a registration fee so what would you like to share uh, with uh, aspiring students of this year's uh, eyrs okay um why is there a registration fee good question the fact is that eantra just remember was a very short uh, two year project many years ago and it's got extensions and extensions and extensions until it's it's reached uh, this point and i believe that that uh, eantra has become too important now to be left to the vagaries of uh, of opinions and officials in and 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 uh, um and other influences in the long term it needs to it needs to self sustain and to and if it is to self sustain then the community has to help sustain it and what does the community get in exchange right for a nominal registration fee you get something which is just not a competition only it is it is a robotics and embedded systems mooc where we teach you before we make you compete okay so what you get is a two staged competition originally we had a selection test where we could only take 20% because that's the resources that we had we could take only 20% of the students into the stage 1 of the competition and then we take them into stage 2 right now what we are doing is that we've eliminated the selection test and we have we are taking everybody into stage 1 so everybody is going to experience the mooc and then after that Uh, uh we are going to take a select few from that because we'll have to invest resources like robotic kits and all that into them and 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 take them through uh, stage 2 right now uh that means stage 2 is totally free that means whatever kits you need whatever robotic kits and accessories and all that whatever training you need is totally free if you have to come to iit bombay for the uh, finals we will host you at iit bombay and if we call you into the internship program which is a 6 week internship program hosted at iit bombay that will be at our cost so there's a lot of value that you potentially got and stage 1 will give you a certificate if you've successfully completed stage 1 that means that if you've not done anything in stage 1 obviously you won't get a certificate but if you have have uh, conducted yourself adequately and come up with something uh, 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 adequate in stage 1 we shall give you a certificate appreciating the level or the grade that you got in stage 1 and naturally you will get that in stage 2 also this is partly because a number of colleges and universities want to include eantra into their academic credit program that means that under the new education policy uh, i think up to 20% of uh, of the grades can go to uh, mooc based courses and stuff like that so i feel eantra qualifies for that and so our stage 1 certificate will assess you enough to give a cue to your uh, your academic institution as to how they can how they can grade you and this comes along with a virtual classroom experience and hands on learning and stuff like that and and we've kept the registration fee very low we say worldwide it will be the cost of a say a mcdonald's meal or whatever it is yeah something that most people can afford i mean they don't need to kind of uh, uh, go through any uh, trouble so we've kept it very very low and if you look at comparable programs whether it is uh, edx or coursera or even taking part in uh, robotics competitions because this is what we are robotics competition first of all there is no robotic competition like ours which which caters to small teams there are always big efforts where the entire institution takes part and to take part for instance in the uh, first robotics competition which is for schools right cost lakhs of rupees so we felt that this is an amazing value that we are offering okay and there are lots of innovations that we've done like mainly everybody gets an access to stage 1 so it's a mooc now someone is asking whether it's edx or coursera we won't tie ourselves down to edx or coursera because i myself have tried to attend courses on edx and coursera and often i've it's not actually held my attention 
I can't say the same for our course because we use a plethora of materials. We use stuff on the web and we uh, use uh, stuff which is generated by ourselves and we curate all the resources and give it to you. We guide you step by step. We mentor you step by step. So you always have expert guidance. There's a human being at the other end on Piazza answering your uh, questions. You are part of a community where if you want help, you put it out into the community and it helps you. So there's a lot of help that you get, which which other experiences don't give you, right? So I think there's a fair amount of value that you get along with this. So um, I hope that answers that question. Okay, so we just wait for uh, Kavi sir. Meanwhile, uh, uh, sir, I have transition cut the already. So we can't hear your audio. I had an issue there, but I'm back. At least I've answered the question. So over to you, Anuj. So, sir, uh, that's, uh, uh, that really explains why uh, there's a registration fee. Sir, uh, students want to know about MOOC in detail. So, would you like to share something on that? Uh, uh, yes, but uh, uh, perhaps the people who are the recipient of the Gyan and who, got, uh, who, uh, who are at the receiving end of the MOOC should uh, answer the question. I would invite uh, Ritu to answer what the learning experience has been like under Iyantra, and she might be having experience of some other uh, uh, media also. So over to you, Ritu. Uh, hello, everyone. So uh, I'll tell a bit about the uh, stage one, which is essentially a MOOC, as Sir also said. So uh, basically, if you are someone who, you know, has uh, doesn't have much experience in, uh, you know, maybe coding or robotics in general, or uh, dealing with uh, hardware and uh, other things, it is actually uh, one of the best uh, competitions you can take part in. Why? Because uh, over here in the initial stages, in the initial tasks, we, we are actually given um, uh, PDFs. Uh, we uh, like step by step, uh, how to, you know, set up uh, environments, how to uh, kind of operate even like uh, for us we required linux operating system so even how to install that how to like all the repositories are given and then once we do that then we have to build on it and we have to make uh, our own progress on it so uh, it's basically you know teaches you along the way um, I myself did not have uh, much of uh, knowledge uh, in technically uh, uh, till last year when I uh, before participating. But uh, over the months, I've, I've felt that uh, it has tremendously helped help me to uh, you know build on my technical skills as well. Um, yeah. Um, Thanks, I okay. So I yeah. Uh, our team was uh, serve and rescue and uh, we were required it was it's basically an abstracted version of a disaster wherein uh, you know there are like for instance uh, floods all around and you need to supply uh, um, food medicine and rescue to people and for that we had to uh, uh, code a drone basically in the ROS environment so I learned uh, things like uh, uh, ROS uh, robot operating system uh, gazebo simulator Obviously, uh, Linux, as I mentioned earlier, and uh, image processing all using Python. So, yeah, that way it helped. Okay, so that's that's interesting, uh, Ritu. So, uh, uh, there, there's lots to learn, you know, like in this uh, competition, and truly EYRC is like an investment for life. Uh, sir, uh, students want to know that uh, uh, how like you know because there's a lockdown going on so how will students from different locations work uh, on i mean in this competition okay the same way that our interns worked so again maybe this time i'll pass the floor over to uh, prishant and an internship is a, is is as much if not more intense than uh, the competition right and we usually have it at iit bombay so this is the first time we managed the internship online and remotely. So we had 133 interns scattered across the country from Jodhpur to Kerala to Rorkela to uh, remote Assam and things like that. And they worked together as one community and one family, right? 
and they worked on very difficult tasks the projects that they were working on under the mentors uh, is not very different from the kind of thing that they would do in the competition because they were working in groups of 2 and 3 and 4 right so tushan maybe you should answer the question uh, yes sir so basically what eendra used for this carrying out this remote internship was discord so many of you might know discord by a gaming platform but now it is transitioning in uh, entire communities are onboarding on discord so with the help of discord there are various servers for specific tasks and with the help of that you can interact with your mentors with our uh, fellow uh, members as well as the amazing part of discord is like you have audio stream server you have video stream server and obviously the messaging part as well as you have amazing capabilities like bots which can play music so you could also have fun time with all the fellows and in short you can connect with everyone and it is a flawless kind of thing as well as for code transferring you all might be knowing github so this way as for the stage 1 it is completely uh, non uh, physical hardware based so you would be using uh, simulators ros and gazebo so it would be very convenient for you to yeah, like your entire stage 1 which is about of uh, one in one one and a half month would would be conducted through this one so i would like to also add here that please don't compare us with uh, coursera and edx and other things like that we we've, we've gone beyond coursera and edx because we we gave a very practical hands on kind of training and we've mastered the art of doing it and in this stage 1 and stage 2 break up what we do is that in stage 1 you learn everything and even if you have to do robotics right you do it on a simulator in a virtual environment but that knowledge is not very different from doing it on a real robot right and once you've shown us what you can do there basis that we'll take you into stage 2 where you'll transfer those skills to a real robot and that transference of that skill is a step uh, a, a decent step but you learn a hell of a lot almost about 75 percent of the skills that you need in the stage 1 which is done on a simulator so don't underestimate the value of a similar of a, a simulator because uh, planes are built uh, uh, designed on a simulator flown in a simulator before the engineers actually sort of make the physical version and put it out there in the world so uh, you learn a hell of a lot in stage 1 and you learn in a hands on way and most important you learn with live mentors who are coaxing you cajoling you taking you ahead giving you assignments and you are taught step by step in small steps you cover a lot of distance right in the training so it's not like we've given you a big thing and kind of you solve it yourself now ritu has something to add to this i'll ask uh, i'll i'll uh, i'll ask her to elaborate yes Uh, sir so uh, being a student i have definitely participated in this competition others and also uh, uh, tried several courses which are available um, all of us have right to we in the lockdown especially we want to do something more than uh, just wasting time or something so we have obviously enrolled in coursera udemy and many more uh, sites such as these to enhance our skills but uh, the thing is that uh, the uh, the uh, the courses definitely i'm not undermining them but the courses are generally uh, maybe one or two days long or uh, one week long or four weeks four weeks long and uh, the thing about them is that we uh, we are uh, sitting at our own place learning by ourselves but uh, when we are uh, competing in such a competition we have a team around us so it's like we also we have some skills our team members have some other skills and together we learn so uh, that is uh, that is one essential point uh, that uh, happens in this competition also that the amount of time we spend on things uh, since uh, like if we are lucky enough we uh, do hard enough hard work we uh, spend about 6 to 7 months in the competition and i mean 6 uh, to 7 months is a very good time to learn a skill to learn multiple skills for that matter also that uh, since this is a project based learning system so we are initially obviously we are given team uh, that is we have a problem statement at hand and we have to make the best uh, solution towards it using uh, certain guidelines from the uh, uh, team uh, team setters themselves and the thing is that since we are competing for the uh, the same problem statement with other teams it kind of uh, pushes us to make the best uh, solution out of it to 
to uh, uh, to come up with the best version of ourselves had it been only a, a simple project with no competition at all we all know how our college projects are since we are doing it on our own we have our, our own limitations but when we are competing against the rest of india all all the colleges and all the students of our age it uh, kind of pushes us to uh, us to make Uh, the best version and it uh, in that we cross our limitations uh, we don't realize that uh, we had so much potential in us until we are actually at the other side of the room so that really helps that's very beautifully put ritu yes sir to yeah i think that's very good and in fact uh, you mentioned that all over india this time it's open for internationally so this time students are going to compete internationally with students across the world so that's that's another uh, amazing thing that's happening to uirc this year so uh, uh, sir they want to know that uh, what really happens in the stage 1 so um, how much time do we have uh, sir we have 5 minutes okay no i'll just take uh, less than a minute so what happens in stage 1 stage 1 as i said is a mooc it teaches you various concepts that you need for stage 2 like for instance if you need to build a balancing board to solve a problem in stage 2 we'll we'll give you all the skills we'll teach you uh, control system design embedded systems programming putting together your your uh, balancing board make your bot balance inside a simulator so you'll master the uh, uh, the uh, control system algorithms like in, for instance in this uh, last year's theme we had them uh, use an lqr algorithm right so they would either build a pid algorithm or lqr algorithm basis that they would make the bot balance and they would make the bot traverse an arena inside a simulator now that's a considerable amount of skills acquired next in stage 2 they transfer these skills to a physical robot now a physical robot has got different characteristics in the sense that the motors might not be totally well balanced right there might be more friction in one motor sensors might have noise in them so you'd be dealing with real world things your bot might not be perfectly machined so you'd have to play around with constants and then you know all sorts of things that happen in the real world which are not there in the perfect world of the simulator okay and uh, so that's how you learn so everything you need to learn some some themes need you to learn image processing some th themes need machine learning some themes uh, need uh, 3d design right and all these all these skills that we teach you use open source tools which is very very important e yantra only believes in open source and you'll realize the value of this when you go into industry i won't uh, say too much more about this because this is another uh, uh, talk but Uh, more importantly what's happening now it's very nice for ritu to uh, to to bring this point out that you are competing against a lot of people uh, in your stage not age your stage basically right and this competing brings out a new kind of uh, it brings out undiscovered things that you never knew about yourself uh, right about what your real staying power is uh, your stamina and your the intellectual potential you have you've never worked marrowing nights as they say amongst the students and to see what comes out of that you never hit your head against a problem for one week two weeks until it actually breaks right and that's a very exhilarating experience which normally we don't have access to and now you'll be testing your metal across a large number of countries initially we have opened up only to certain countries in south asia and africa like the bimstec group which is bangladesh nepal bhutan sri lanka myanmar thailand and in the asean group which is indonesia malaysia singapore cambodia laos vietnam and uh, so on and in africa we've chosen two countries which is namibia and south africa so you'll be testing yourself i'm certain that you guys will do very very well this is before we go out to the rest of the world and the developed countries like israel and europe and america and canada and all these kind of things right so this is we are taking our first step in that uh, direction and you can test your metal more and more as you go along with us over to you anuj right sir so thank you sir for clarifying that uh, sir like i remember talking to one of the interns and like uh, you know the intern was um, you know sharing that you know like uh, uh, the actual price is the learning that we get but still uh, there are a lot of students who have some questions that 
if we get down before last task of stage one, will we get appreciation certificate? Uh, technical question, but uh, yes, sir, please uh, address it. Okay. Um, my answer to that is that we don't quite have an answer yet. Because uh, this is the first time we'll be doing this. And I feel that if you've done adequately, now we have to define what adequately means, right? And it, it will depend on theme to theme. These are decisions that we will make, but we will be reasonable. Our job is not to fail you in life. The job of a teacher is to try and pass on as much gyan. So Iyantra is actually a teacher. We want all you guys to succeed. We feel very bad when you don't get to the next stages and all that. But I'm sure that if you persevere, you will get, get, up to the end of stage one, we will we will position stage one in a way that you will be able to complete it, right? And it's only if you do something really kind of miserable that you won't uh, get to that stage. And you have us encouraging you all the way. Do remember, we have structured it in this way because we should be able to give a, a grade every stage of stage one so we can give you a certificate which is meaningful and which holds value to an academic institution when they want to use it in their grading. So that's the basis on which on which we'll uh, we'll uh, uh, give you a certificate for stage one. It'll be an act. Uh, it'll be an as accurate representation of the skills that you have acquired. And for that, we'll have to be very objective. Now that's that's our problem, and we'll try our best to do that. Yes, yes sir. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that. I think that will clarify a lot of uh, you know questions that students have. Um, sir, I think you've covered this question, but I will still ask you because this a uh, lot of students have this question. Is that will you teach uh, in MOOC or will you send the material to them? And I think you have already shared on this, but uh, if you could address this one also. Okay, what does teaching and what does sending material mean? Because we are doing, uh, I'm teaching a course this semester at, uh, at IIT Bombay. It's an online course. So, uh, so what we have decided to do is that I'm recording my lectures and sending it uh, to the, the uh, uh, students. And then in class, we are having interaction. So it's like a flipped classroom. Okay. So uh, we'll explore variants of this where we'll send you recorded slides with a voiceover and stuff like that. But let me share with you one thing. By just listening to a lecture, you don't learn very much. And that's my experience. I'm sure it's your experience also. It's when you start doing the assignments that you actually learn, right? Especially in very practical courses like programming and anything. Most of these things are practical. So, so, so don't don't get too uh, too obsessed by the mode in which you are taught. As long as it's engaging, as long as you can relate to it, as long as it 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 makes you and encourages you to work and learn stuff, the mode is good. So don't be obsessed about these kind of things. I can give you a one hour lecture and you'll get very bored. And one hour lectures are not the way to teach online, I feel, right? Maximum should be about 10 to 12 minutes, but many teachers haven't discovered that yet, right? They will jado one hour lectures the way they do in classrooms, but that's not really the way to go. Sorry, don't tell them I said that. <laughs> so you're live. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, sir, uh, one question is that uh, so these I think this is coming from a seeking mind because they're saying that if we want to prepare beforehand, what are the topics we should explore? If you want to prepare beforehand, what are the topics that you should explore? Um, anything that you're interested in, right? Uh, get some experience in programming in Python, but you know we don't require very much. Whatever you need in the competition, we teach you. Right. But what we are in the process of doing at the moment is that we are turning a lot of our material into MOOCs and these MOOCs will be running on a monthly basis. And uh, if you want, you can take these MOOCs offline. Right. And separately. And if you take them, it will definitely give you the, uh, the background or the gyan which will help uh, which will help you in the competition. OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. So, uh, uh, sir. Uh, there is uh, one question, which is that uh, why only one person cannot participate? Why only one person cannot participate? Good question. Um, we started off with four person teams, and I think that's been a very successful model. If it ain't broke, then don't change it. And I feel that this four person thing is very important because most problems in life are multidisciplinary. And uh, uh, you need different skills in a team. And it's very important that you learn to work in a team 
because when you go out into the world you're going to work in teams right and typically we find that uh, that the the team is richer for having different skills computer science electrical engineering mechanical and stuff like that and uh, also the the four person team is a kind of self help group you're not alone the other thing is we assess you as a team that's a very important point we assess you as a team if the team fails the team fails not one person fails if the team succeeds the team succeeds not one person succeeds right and i think there are some very important learnings to be discovered there right so i feel that this 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 having people work in teams is a very important skill that that the student should learn uh, before they go out into the outside world and plus you can tackle more interesting and more ambitious uh, problems because uh, you can divide the work into four and do much more than one person could do yes anuj right sir that's that's very important sir um, so we we will have we will take on more questions when we go live next sunday also uh, but uh, i would really appreciate sir if you could share a message with the students you know who are uh, really looking forward to compete in this year's uh, eyrc and really looking forward to learn excellent so all i can say is that uh, register and participate and help us make this year's competition a real success and i feel that in so doing you will not only be learning a lot but you'll becoming you you you'll also be uh, uh, turning into a much more contributing member of society in india our desire is that as many of our engineering students as possible should be exposed to this way of learning because this is really the way to go our country needs many more leaders it needs many more entrepreneurs and by 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 engaging with eantra you are taking your first step towards going in that direction of becoming a self reliant leader if you like uh, who also knows the technology and our country is desperately in need of people who can solve real problems and that's what eantra does through all its initiatives right eantra competition teaches you skills and eantra innovation challenge helps you use these skills to solve real problems in fact this year the eantra innovation challenge is going to focus on disaster management where we'll first tell you about disasters we'll teach you tools that you need like the gis uh, databases and anal analytics tools and all that we'll teach you innovation and entrepreneurship and then we'll actually help you discover an interesting problem to solve which can turn into a startup later and then we'll give you all the information and gyan that you need along the way but eyic until now is available only to eantra labs and we have about 385 plus labs uh, throughout the country but more important than all right is our desire as a teacher as a well wisher as a friend right to give you the experience to give you the experiences to turn you into the best engineer and the best human being that you can be and i think if we achieve that we've done a hell of a lot and we can give our all of ourselves a pat on the back for that so i hope that's answered the question thank you right sir so thank you sir uh, so what we'll do is sir we'll wrap up this session now and uh, we will have another session on uh, coming sunday so uh, uh, everyone who's watching uh, us today live uh, please do uh, come back and you know uh, have your queries answered whatever queries you have please put it forward uh, so that kavi sir and you know the team can address your queries uh, and you can participate in the competition uh, and you know maximize your learning out of it so uh, i would uh, really like to thank you all for patiently uh, listening to us and uh, for being a lovely audience uh, it's it's a sunday evening well spent and i would like to thank uh, professor kavi arya Uh, for uh, being here and really motivating and encouraging all of us and i would really like to thank uh, trushant and ritu for sharing their experiences of uh, last year's e yrc and also the internship and uh, lastly thank you deepa and aditya for uh, uh, this uh, session so thanks a lot everyone we can conclude here we are i'd like to thank uh, uh, not only deepa and aditya but suprabha who who is who is out of sight here and actually the real the entire eantra team which has made this happen and it's a delightful how the interns and the team has got together and made this really happen it's been my desire for many years to start doing this and engage with the students but thanks all for having made it off, uh, happen including anuj and riddhi thank you very much thank you sir